The Discovery, Chapter 11, Part 2 As David followed him through the many rows of flowers laid out through the shop, his eyes were drawn to beautiful lilies and roses ranging from every color in the spectrum. An entire row was dedicated to every shade of red the equine eye could perceive, and every flower David could name was in said row. As he followed the Thestral further into the store, he saw more and more flowers ranging from every color imaginable. Every species of every flower was present. There was even a section for carnivorous plants as well. They walked through row after row of beautiful flowers that David couldn't name even if he tried. Before, the Thestral stopped at a small doorway and unlocked it, motioning for David to follow him inside. Inside the secret room, David saw a dim glow emanating from the darkness. There were no lights in the room, making it intentionally dim, save for the plants inside. As he entered, more and more flowers slowly began to glow. Every color of the rainbow began to fill the room, and David was taken aback by the sheer beauty of the dozens of bioluminescent plants. Ah, here we are, the Thestral said, pointing out a flower and drawing David's attention from the other flowers in the room. David walked up to the flower in question and inspected it. At first glance, it seemed fake. It looks like the petals were made of glass and expertly crafted into the shape of a rose. They had a deep blue tinge to them and seems to lightly pulse with light every few seconds. This is a crystal rose. If her eyes are as beautiful as you described, then the ocean blue aura of this flower will complement her nicely. This rose has been used by many mares and stallions to confess their love. It's said that if your heart is pure and your love true, then the crystal rose will glow even brighter when it feels your presence." The Thestral spoke, gently grabbing the flower with his hooves and turning to David. Here, please take the flower. David slowly reached out and gently grabbed the flower. He held it gingerly, as if it would break at any moment. After a few seconds, the petals seemed to glow brighter and brighter. David stared in awe at the mysterious flower as the Thestral smiled brightly at him. Oh. The flower has spoken. I wish you the best of luck with your mare. How much for this flower? David asked, his eyes still glued to the majestic rose in his hand. Oh, for you, free of charge. The Thestral responded. David swiveled his head to look at the pony. Free? D no, I, I can't just take this. You might have just saved my chance with Mid. Let me give you something for it. David said, already digging into his pocket with his free hand. Oh, it is a rare thing to see true love blossom these days. One day when I was younger, I watched the spark of romance create a bond. An understanding between two ponies. An understanding of trust and affection. An understanding that no matter what happens, the only thing they will ever truly need is each other. It was an understanding so bold, so passionate, and so beautiful. Just like this flower. When I saw that phenomenon, that connection, that love, I knew my destiny was to provide that spark of romance. A spark that you need, my friend. Please, take the flower. Tell her you love her and find your happiness. The Thestral said, handing David a small black box just large enough to house the rose. David opened the box and felt the fuzzy interior. Almost as soft as midnight's fur. David gently placed the crystal rose in the box and closed it. He noticed a small glass window just on top of the petals. The cool blue light shone through the glass brightly, washing over David's face as he stared at the flower. <laughs> it's like holding a star in my hand. If this doesn't win her back, nothing will. After a few seconds, David looked up to see the Thestral already at the doorway. David followed behind, dumbstruck. Words failed him as the pony opened the door for him. He walked out into the cold to find the rising sun. He turned around to find the Thestral still in the doorway, flashing him a toothy grin. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have no idea what this means to me. Like I said, love is beautiful. If I can help even in a small way, I will. Good luck. The Thestral said, closing the door. Wait, I didn't get your name! David cried out as the door clicked shut. The open sign in the window quickly flipped to a closed sign, and the pony was gone. El Florero del Desierto. I gotta come back here sometime. I like that guy. 
Midnight galloped into Canterlot as fast as her legs would carry her. She frantically searched throughout the city for any trace of David. As she went from place to place, she asked every pony she ran into if they had seen her missing friend. Excuse me, have you seen David? Uh, no. Have you seen David? Who? Have you seen David? <laughs> the alien? No. Midnight galloped towards the castle. Maybe he's with one of the princesses. She thought to herself as she approached the front gate. Midnight moved with such haste, she almost didn't hear the front guard calling her name. Midnight! She turned her head to see a Pegasus guard quickly trotting up to her. Can I help you? I'm kind of looking for my friend right now, so I don't have much time to talk. Midnight said, trying to get away from the guard. You're looking for David, right? The guard said. Yes! Oh my gosh! You've seen him? Where is he? Midnight said, her excitement peaking. Whoa, calm down there. I'm Storm Shields, one of David's friends. He stayed at my house last night. He left a couple of hours ago. He was going to your house to apologize. Storm said, trying to calm the increasingly excited unicorn in front of her. Oh my gosh, thank you so much! Midnight said, wrapping Storm in a hug before galloping off towards her house. Storm stood there in bewilderment for a few seconds as she watched Midnight gallop away. <laughs> she is a keeper, Davy. Treat her right. Storm said as she returns to her post. David walked up the steps to Midnight's front porch and approached the door. He knocked several times before stepping away and waiting patiently for an answer. Several minutes passed with no answer before David decided to knock again, louder. But still, nothing. Hmm, is she asleep still? No, she, she would have heard me knocking. Maybe she's not here. Should I wait for her to get back? I mean, I have the key, but I don't feel right going in there now since she's not there. What to do, David? What to do? David thought to himself as he scanned the area surrounding Midnight's house. Hmm, I guess I could go for a walk while I wait. The peaks up here are beautiful when ponies aren't chasing you off the edge. Yeah, I'll do that and come back in, like, an hour. Yeah, sounds good. I just hope she gets back by then. David turned and walked down the steps away from Midnight's house and towards the cliffside. He held the black box gently in his hand as he made his way across the open field. A soft breeze lightly caressed his face as it blew over the mountainside and the sound of rushing water quickly filled David's ears as he approached. The rock face seemed all the more wonderful to enjoy and calm his nerves as he waited for midnight. David quickly found himself at the cliff where he almost lost his life merely two months ago. As the updraft blew his hair back and slightly skyward, he closed his eyes. He couldn't help but think of the mare that saved his life two months ago. He saw her soft fur, her silky mane and tail, and her ocean blue eyes. A beautiful warmth filled his chest, and a renewed vigor filled his mind. I'm gonna fix this mid. All I need is a chance. David stepped away from the edge and turned to walk along the side of the cliff. He moved slowly, his mind far too busy calculating the right thing to say to the graphite mare to worry about speed. Midnight barged into her front door and swiveled her head in a frantic search for David. She trotted through the front hallway and into the living room before making her way to every other room in her house. David? She called out. No answer. David! Again, no answer. Midnight burst into David's room and looked at every corner for even a trace of the missing human. A pit quickly formed in her stomach as her fears began to claw at her mind. She chanced one last room and bolted out of David's room to the stairs and up to her room. It was as empty and unkempt as when she left it that morning. Midnight's heavy breathing slowed as her heart sank. Her head hung low, and she choked back the tears before they could start. No. Where is he? He couldn't have just left, could he? Midnight thought to herself as she slowly turned on her hooves. I need to get out of here. Midnight trudged out of her room and down the stairs. She walked out of the open door and slowly walked towards the cliffside. The walk was slow and painful. Her heart ached, and her head hung just barely above the ground. She wasn't in any kind of hurry, her mind barely registered the passing of time until she arrived at the edge of the cliff. 
Um, maybe that mare just lied to me to cover for David or something. Maybe he told her to lie because he doesn't want to see me anymore. I really messed this up. <laughs> what am I gonna do? Why would he just leave me like this? Midnight sat on the edge with her head hung low. The pit in her stomach physically hurt, and despite her best efforts, the tears slowly started to force their way out. Midnight shut her eyes as they clawed their way out and began to flow freely, leading her into sobbing. Damn it! Stop crying! Please stop crying! She sat there for a while, until the sun was high in the sky. Her sobs were the only noise to accompany the sound of the mountain breeze as they echoed off the cliffside. Her tears dripped down into the dirt beneath her hooves as the stabbing pain in her heart persisted. Her will crumbled, and she allowed herself to cry freely. Midnight wondered if the tears were ever going to stop. She knew they had to eventually. Though at the moment, she couldn't even fathom a world without this crippling pain. So lost was she in her own suffering that she didn't hear the footsteps closing in behind her. Hey, nothing like a cliffhanger, although it sucks that I have to stop now because I have to go shopping. But man, this is getting good. Anywho, let's get on to our smooth donators. Top donators are 630, Only One Thing, Subaru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Har, Pastel Skies, Austin, Rollins, Stu, Hex, Sword, Brother, Marcher, Dami, Crown, Library, Runesife, 9852, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul, Battle, Swaffle, Shadow, Moon, Luigi, 88, Chance Across, Big Smoke, 369, Bobcat, GJF, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.